I feel like I need a disclaimer on this video. I have done this before and I slightly know what I'm doing. I guess I was right about revisiting felt soon, though I guarantee you this is still way more colors than I actually need. I think I've mentioned it in a video before. My mom was an incredible seamstress and just a very creative person who was always making something. I always remember her working on cruel embroidery in the van on our vacations. She was trying to do a piece for each one of her children. This is the one that she did for me. But before I was old enough to remember, there was another huge project she undertook, making Christmas stockings for all seven of us. This is from, why is there something in my stocking? This is not a part of the video. I did not know this was here. Did I inherit all the stocking hooks? Why are they all in my stocking? That's random. Anyway, all seven of us had one of these extremely detailed and blinged up Christmas felt stockings. They were a really big thing back then. I think they still are now. I still see felt stockings for kids all over the place, though I don't usually see them as complex as this one. There's a lot of sequins on this thing. So these actually came in kits. They would be a preset design you'd purchase and it would have all of the felt pieces already in it, I think already cut out, and it would have instructions for how you were supposed to put together the entire stocking. I think the company is Barilla? Wait, no. Busilla. Barilla. That's a pasta company. Busilla is the one who makes these. And as far as I know, they're pretty much the only company that does this. At least, again, to this level of intricacy. I mean, look at that. Her arm comes up. I wish I had a picture of all seven of them in a row. I mean, there are pictures, obviously. We took one every year, I'm sure. But I don't know where those pictures are. And of course, before I go on with this video, let me address the elephant in the room. If this is my stocking, why doesn't it have my name on it? Whale! So I don't think I've ever mentioned this on this channel before, but yes, my first name is actually Kaylee. It even feels weird to say it now. And I went by that first name all the way up until I graduated college. I just never personally liked it. Absolutely no offense to anyone whose name is Kaylee. Names have just always been very important to me and Kaylee never felt right to me for me. Like literally my entire childhood, I would like cringe inwardly anytime I heard somebody say my name, which is not really what you want. So my senior year of college, I was chatting with a good friend who actually went by her middle name, like her parents chose to call her by her middle name. And she was like, well, if you don't like the name Kaylee for yourself, why don't you just go by your middle name? Which is Charlotte. So I briefly experimented with going by Lottie, which is a freaking adorable name that I love, and again, was not right for me. And then realized that I am a Charlie. I have always been a Charlie. I will always be a Charlie. I mean, maybe someday I'll be an actual Charlotte. I feel like I may settle into Charlotte at a certain period in my life. So yeah, I started going by Charlie after graduating college. It took a while to switch over in my head. It took a while for other people to switch over, but it's been years now and it is completely switched over. And that is the story of why my stocking says Kaylee. I can always chat more about that in the future if you wanna know how annoying it is to try to get people to call you by a different name. But for now, let's get back to stockings. I hadn't given stockings any further thought in the last, I don't know, decade. I think I've mentioned before, I'm not a big Christmas person. Until a few years ago, one of my sisters had her first child and she asked me if I would make him a personalized felt Christmas stocking in the style of the ones that our mother had made us. And I was like, sure, why not? Sure. We're just gonna like buy one of the kits from Busilla and I'm gonna make it for you because her creativities lie in other areas. She's a great photographer, not so into stitching. So we began digging through all of their designs, looking for the absolute perfect one for her son, but we ran into a little problem, or rather a complication of our own making. Her son's name is Fox. Also his middle name, I might add. We've got a theme going on here. And therefore they were really hoping that his Christmas stocking could have a fox on it. Y'all, he had so many fox themed toys and decorations and everything. It was freaking adorable, but we couldn't find one. We could not find a single kit from Busilla that had a fox on it. I started looking 
elsewhere at other companies and I found like one Christmas stocking I think that had a fox on it and it was just really plain and boring and not really the same style that we were going for. So of course in my infinite crafting arrogance I said well I'll just design one from scratch for you. And that actually worked out real well because this is what I made and it was actually a really fun process. So fun in fact that the next year even though she hadn't had any more kids I was like I think I'm gonna make a couple more. <laughs> yeah so turns out without like a deadline or a specific person that I'm making one for I fell off that wagon real fast. Where is it? Where did you go? Here it is. So we have this. A half finished felt Christmas stocking crammed in a bag. If you would just like a little hint at um, what the design was of this one, it was corgis, Christmas corgis. It's actually a really freaking cute stocking design and I need to finish it. I'm honestly not sure why I stopped. I think I just got distracted by other projects, honestly. All right though, what is my point? I feel like I take so long to get to the freaking point sometimes. That same sister has had a second son, which means it's time for another Christmas stocking with a deadline and someone that it's specifically for. He's not named after an animal, so we're gonna have to get a little more creative here. I felt like before I could start his stocking, I really need to finish this one. I hate to leave things unfinished, like either quit with no plans to restart a project, that's perfectly fine. There is nothing wrong with quitting or finish. I really hate when I end up doing the in-between thing of like, I really do want to finish this. I just haven't. Let's unpack a Ziploc. So all of this is the pattern, which I don't think I need anymore. I'm pretty sure I had cut everything out already when I quit on this one. Oh Lord, I just left all sorts of stuff in here. Oh, I do remember this. This guy's supposed to have a hat. What is this though? What is that? We have a teeny tiny bone. Look at that guy. What was that for? Oh, I remember the bone is supposed to go in the stocking. Ta-da! So that was the basic design. Let's do it. Okay, this one's done. So now it's just time to do the one that this video is actually for. Let's go! The first thing I do is sketch out a basic design, quite messily. My sister had requested a bear as the main animal for Finn, and we want to keep the same general woodland theme as Fox's stocking. I thought, bear on a sled, perfect! That main design does leave a lot of blank space on the stocking though, so I'll maybe add a snowman, or some rabbits, or a tree, or all of the above. Next, I tape several pieces of paper together and trace the original stocking shape, so I can do a full-size sketch. This will also become the pattern piece for the stocking itself, so by tracing mine, I make sure they're always the same shape and size. Then I re-sketched full size this time, adding some adjustments until I reached a final design that I like. Haha, <laughs> not really. I'll keep changing this design as I go. It's very fluid up till the end, but I like the bear and the rest will follow after.
Believe it or not, I'm not actually that crazy about working with felt. There is so much puppy fur in this belt. It attracts dog fur like a magnet, and it's very hard to then detract it. Honestly, that's my only complaint though. Felt is a very forgiving fabric. First, I cut out the shape of the stocking in two layers of white felt. This will be the base of the whole thing. Then I begin with the easy bits. The stripe across the top where the name goes, which we're going to do in white again to match Fox's stocking. Then a segment of light blue, which will be the sky behind the hills. I like having several layers of felt to give the stocking more support, so rather than having the sky just meet the edge of the stripe or go slightly under, it'll actually go all the way up to the upper edge of the stocking. Next was the little handle loop out of red felt. And I'd like to note here that the last two times I've made these stockings, I definitely started by making paper pattern pieces, which I then saved. But this time, I don't know, I'm not in the mood? Oh well. Now I'm going to start with the layers of hills, which will all be in white because they're snow covered. Yes, layers of white on white on white seems a little pointless, but with stitching and padding, it'll actually add a lot of depth and texture to the overall stocking. I don't know why I was doing all of this standing up. Like my back hurts enough as it is. Take a seat, madame. I was in a very weird place productivity wise this day though, kind of like stand and get it done or sit and completely lose interest. Finally done with the white. Wait. I think. Do I still need this? We're working from back to front, so next I'm going to cut out any little details I want to be on the hills behind the bear, even if he'll end up covering some of them. That's the joy of making one of these rather than mass producing them. I don't mind if I use a little more felt than necessary. First, a tiny house, which I clearly had way too much fun making. What color are roofs? Roofs. I mean, do I just make this basic AF? Right now it's literally the house that I drew when I was like four years old. Oh my god. I can't work this tiny. What's the smallest felt piece that I'll put on this? Right now it's that. Can you even see that? Let me get closer. This is currently the smallest felt piece on this stocking. Ridiculous, you say? I agree. There she is. One teeny tiny house. Then it was time for a few trees. Not the trees. Ugh, I hate doing trees. This is where drawing it out and having pattern pieces would probably be helpful. Oh well. Okay. <gasps> All those tiny chunks of snow were blurring my eyes. So with the background pretty much done, I stepped away for the night. The next morning, <clears throat> afternoon to be technical, I started on all those front felt layers. Why is there even more fur? These I drew out in Photoshop first, so I could easily print them in whatever size needed, then cut the pattern into the various pieces. Do I want this ever so slightly bigger? After much resizing and consultation with my sister, it was chopping time. Now comes all the layering. So much chopping. This seems so simple, but uh, I made this one piece of paper, it's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, probably at least nine different pieces of felt, not to mention the teeny tiny mittens. Yay! We're getting places, and my hand hurts. <laughs> Look at all these stripes I have to sew on. Why? <laughs> Best yet, you know what I have left? The rabbit friends. We've also decided to uh, make the rabbits look like the two pet rabbits we had when we were kids. Their names were Ashley and Shadow, and one was all gray, and the other one was half white and half brown. So, fun little personal callback there.
All the pieces cut out, all knuckles on my right hand aching, it was time for another break. What could be a better way to rest your hand than switching right over to some embroidery for the rest of the night? Ah. Uh, okay. Yep. I need to stop now. Just started watching Dairy Girls last night. Let's see if I can get this whole thing stitched together in three seasons. Not gonna lie, right now it feels like a lot. Two and a half seasons resulted in this, which doesn't seem like much, but then it was really only a half day and British TV seasons are so short. 10 out of 10 recommend Dairy Girls though. And it's day four, right? Day four? Sure. On this stocking. If this seems like a slow process, then yep, hello and welcome to embroidery. Even when you add all the felt, it's not a quick jaunt with a needle. I think Fox's stocking took me several weeks to make, so I'm flying through this one. Day five dawns. Just kidding, it's the afternoon again. The crows have come to town. I can see why a group of crows is called a murder, because it kind of feels like you're gonna be murdered when you hear all of them squawking together. Back to stitching. And some stuffing this time. Day six and it's more, you guessed it, stitching. Always and for all reasons, I do the dying noises. No, I'm definitely not going stir crazy here. Allergies are hitting me hard here on day seven, yet onward we go with more, yep, stitching. Thank goodness for coffee and cuddly puppies. So just as I was thinking that I could actually possibly maybe finish this today, I realized that there's a weird little empty space in the middle of this stocking and I was at a loss as to how to fill it or whether I even needed to fill it, but it was really bothering me. And I finally came up with the solution of adding a big red bow on the top of this tree, which I think also helps the tree look more Christmassy instead of just a tree in the forest with snow on it. And then I can take the dramatic ending ribbons of that bow and loop them kind of into that empty space to fill that up as well. So solve that problem. I like the overall look, but now I'm definitely not finishing this today. More stitching. On the eighth day of stocking making, well, I had a job, so there was no stitching at all. Does that really count as day eight then? Nah. Okay, on the real day eight of stitching, it was very windy. And I finished the stitching. Oh my God, it's finally done. Ish. So the last thing to do is, of course, put together the actual stocking. I could do just this as the front, this as the back, and then you add in a layer of regular fabric, something non-stretch and not felt, to give it some extra sturdiness. But I think I might 
add in a third layer of felt as well. Could actually finish this today. But I have a job that I have to start getting ready for in like half an hour. Okay. Ah. Everything's fine. I had a piece that is actually a better fabric in my scraps. But let's see, I think this is just big enough. Oh yes it is, love it. So this we're gonna cut out with like a half inch border because that's gonna get folded under just so there's no raw edges. It is against my own nature to be so cavalier with the placement of the pin container, she wrote in her memoirs. I had memory of this being a pain in the butt, and that memory was correct. Okay, and that was my it's time to get ready for work alarm, so the very last stitching together will not get done today, but it will get done probably tomorrow. Let's skip ahead to it being done. This chair is not necessarily the most reliable. So picturesque. Until tomorrow when this one goes in the mail, that one goes into storage, and uh, I don't know what's happening with this one. So for some reason, that felt like it took a really long time to complete. But honestly, that's a lot of embroidery. And I did it in what, eight days-ish? And I really never worked on it for a full day either because it's just not difficult, but like uncomfortable-ish to stitch on small felt pieces like this. It's not the same as being over an embroidery frame or even an embroidery hoop. It's kind of like here, and maybe that's because I have terrible eyesight, probably. So generally, I think I was only stitching on it for half days, and I'm really pleased with how it turned out. Yeah, okay. Why are your paws wet? Do I wanna know? Okay, are you so needy? There's a lot of fun little details on this one that I'm pretty proud of, I mean, the rabbits and mittens are hilarious. I think the teeny tiny house in the distance is probably my favorite part. Anyway, I'm gonna wrap this up pretty fast because it's hard to film out here. These are so fun to create. I love that we all had them growing up. I love that it was a little bit of personalization and something I have that my mom worked on specifically for me. Like that's so special. And I really find it special that I get to create these for my nephews in that same way. I highly recommend giving it a try if there's a kid in your life, whether your own or someone else's that you're connected with in some way. I don't know. I mean, just getting the kit from Brusilla and putting that together on your own, doing the stitching, it's such a fun project. But also, if you're feeling a little adventurous, if you wanna give it your own spin and your own flair, and um, you don't mind cutting out so many pieces of felt. Try designing it from scratch. That's super fun too. And speaking of all those tiny pieces of felt, that's something I really wanted to see in the end. How many total pieces of felt went into this? I'm a count for a second. One, 16, 50, 100, 13, 51, 52, 53, 54. Yeah, that sounds about right. 154 pieces of felt. No wonder my hand hurt.